Good morning. Thank you for coming and welcome to the Tiny Toolkit Manifesto. Uh, my name is Drew Batchelor. I'm a designer, an engineer, a maker and a roller skater. I'm from Bristol, UK. I'm quite nervous, so can I just check, are there any of my Bristol crew out here? All right, good, cool, we've got a few of you, all right. Um, so here on the screen are a few of the projects that I've made recently. Um, there's some bicycles, there's a bunch of LEDs. Um, I restored the lathe for Bristol Hackspace. And um, on the left there is the aromatic, which Aaron Dasan, Aaron, where are you? He's over there. Aaron and I are installing in the lounge this afternoon, so come and have a look at this uh, later on in the festival. Um, so to start with, what is a tiny toolkit? So it's ultra portable. We can transport it in the bottom of our rucksack, we can transport it in our bicycle panniers, we can transport it on public transport. Uh, they have a very defined purpose, and within that, uh, a defined like not purpose, what it doesn't do. That's one of the things we need to do to keep it tiny, keep it tiny enough so it can fit in our hands. Um, we found that they work best if they're under two kilograms, uh, just to be able to keep that portability going. And uh, when we added it up, we were surprised to find out that some of them have 200 components in them, which packs a heck of a lot of capability into one tiny handheld bag. Um, they are very modular, so we might have different toolkits for different activities. And I hope that this talk uh, will inspire you to make your own uh, tiny toolkit. So here's some examples of some of our tiny toolkits. Uh, the kind of inspiration for this talk and for this project was uh, Richard Jarkman's tiny toolkit, which he's been developing and using for many years. That's the top middle one there. And uh, he generally uses that for fixing robots in fields and churches and cafes. Um, and it's uh, also perfect for coming to EMF. We've also got things like bespoke portable soldering kits. Uh, we've got this kit here, which I made up um, for doing product engineering and product repair on the go. Um, I've also got some specialist kits, say sort of leather working kits and one for fixing roller skates for friends. Uh, so, why do we love tiny toolkits so much? Uh, I asked Richard to answer this one for us. Um, and we've been having a lot of a talk about it, a kind of philosophy of um, why do we love these tiny toolkits, why are they great? And there is something joyous about the packaged capability of a good kit, like traveling around with your backpack with everything you need and nothing else. Um, there's a thing about economy and efficiency, that kind of thing, being able to do a lot with a little. Um, as I said, sometimes, like EMF Festival, we really need to fill, fix robots in a field, uh, or in churches, or in cafes, or at friends' houses. Um, there's something I don't understand here, which I've been talking to Richard about, and that is about the, the poetry of capability. Uh, I don't know what it means, but I hope to learn in the next year. But Richard tells me it's important, so it will be important. Um, and I think, I don't know about you lot, but we just love tools, especially very nice tools. There's a real joy in working with great tools. Um, so before we get into the manifesto, a little bit about what a tiny toolkit's not. Uh, this is not a new idea. I'm not peddling any novelty here. I mean, tool wells have been around forever. Uh, little toolboxes have been around forever. Small toolkits have been around forever. I think that says they're a great thing. Uh, they're something that we want. These are not quite EDC. So EDC is everyday carry. There's a whole community around everyday carries. Um, they're great. For us, they're less about fixing robots and products and they're more about survival stuff. Uh, a little bit more outdoorsy, a little bit more ultra lightweight titanium tools. Um, and some of them, for some of them, EDC becomes about guns. There's a different acronym there. Yeah. Um, but the EDC community have a lot of great ideas, a lot of great tools, and we do go and look up a lot of their YouTube videos for ideas. Watch out, some of them are, have affiliate links to Amazon and things like this, so they get editorially questionable, but filter out the good stuff. 
Um, our tiny toolkit's not our full toolkit that we've got at home. Um, if we could bring that along, well, I mean, we all hauled our stuff from the car park up to here, and if I'd bought my full toolkit as well, there would have been a lot more trips. Um, and I also just want to say this is really not a new idea. I mean, uh, three million years ago, prior to Homo sapiens, uh, early hominids would have had tiny toolkits because there weren't many tools you could have. So like a really nice sharpened flint, a bit of antler, um, maybe wrapped in an animal hide. This is, this is pre predating Homo sapiens. Once this talk's done, if you'd like uh, to know anything more, um, Sam W. Is Sam here? He said he probably couldn't make it, and if he was here, it was a bad thing because he's going around fixing all the um, AV for the festival. So if he's here, it means the AV's broken. Um, so Sam has been building up this website, tinytoolkate.it, uh, with Richard, and then we've been populating it. Um, this is a community interest site for this community. So for like the EMF community, for the hackers and the makers, it's non-commercial, there are no links to, uh, no affiliate links, um, but we are looking for community contributions. So if you've got a tiny toolkit or some tool recommendations, uh, please email Sam um, and uh, add to the wisdom, add your wisdom on there. So without further ado, let's crack on with the Tiny Toolkit Manifesto. So a kind of philosophy of tiny toolkits. Oh, I skipped one. Number one. If you need a tool and it's at home, that's no good to you. You can only work with the tools that you've got here today. Um, and this is kind of like the driving thought behind creating our tiny toolkits. Uh, how many of you already asked to borrow some piece of kit or a tool since you arrived at EMF? Yes. Now that also works if you've got friends with tools, that could be helpful. Um, I spent 30 minutes yesterday looking for a way to cut a piece of 5 mil acrylic. If I was at home, this was a two minute job. But in a field it's 30 minutes. Um, and I think that's the premise of why we have these tiny toolkits. You cannot bring everything with you, but what you can bring with you really makes a big difference. Number two, sorry, that was number zero because uh, I've apparently got a start list at zero now. So this is number one, Small is Beautiful. Um, you can't bring everything with you all the time. Small is Beautiful is a book by E.F. Schumacher and I think it's a wonderful philosophy. Um, and what it comes down to is Everything in the kit must earn its place in the kit. Everything here has to work hard because there's a limit to how much I carry. Uh, for me, I found like the optimum weight for this kit was 1.3 kilos. I put in a bit more, it became 1.5 kilos and then I stuck it in my bag and I was like, no, this is too much. So then I had to take something out. Um, we've generally found two kilograms at the most is about what we want and definitely hand sized. Um, okay, this is EMF, so we love sporks. Richard, when's your sport workshop? Yeah. Titanium sport workshop. Richard also uh, does runs the sporks workshops, um, and sometimes a spork is the best tool. So sometimes you need a really dedicated single-purpose tool that does one thing very well, and sometimes. A multi-tool is the best choice. Uh, so you've got emus, they're brilliant at running. Flying, not so much. You've got penguins, they're amazing at swimming. They're really no good at running, but they're awesome at marathons in the Antarctic. They can walk a heck of a long distance. Flying is not a strong suit. Albatrosses, they've got flying nailed. Ducks, okay. Swimming is pretty good, but not as good as a penguin, but they can do the swimming. Flying, they can fly long distances, that's pretty good. Walking, I mean they can do a respectable waddle. Oh, not very respectable waddle. But the point is, if you need all three, your duck's your best choice. Um, so I guess I'm saying we like sporks at EMF. <laughs> so, uh, I would hope you've all heard of Adam Savage and his YouTube channel is a wonderful place for regular wisdom about tools and about making. 
Um, and I highly recommend you subscribe if you don't already. Um, I think this is really about the usage and abusage of tools. I mean, like, yes, every tool is a hammer, but please don't use my pliers as a hammer. This is not a good idea. Um, and one of the things we've found is none of our tiny toolkits have hammers in them yet, because we haven't found a great hammer that is lightweight, that fits in there. But also, perhaps, because usually we can find something heavy we can hit with if we need to. Um, I have absolutely no clue what this abomination of a tool is, but I like to like trawl eBay and find vintage tools that have died out and are not made or sold anymore. But as far as I can tell, this is a hammer, like an adjustable wrench, uh, the claw from a hammer, but looking like a weird Donald Trump quiff, uh, a ruler, and a pry bar all in one. Um, I think it's probably awful at all of them, but I think I quite like one because it's quite funny. Um, so, one of the things we've realized is, it, it, it's kind of like, choose your compromises with pet care. It's engineering, um, engineering optimization, okay? So, when we're choosing a tool for a tiny toolkit, what's important? Well, utility is important. Does it do the job? Cost, weight, size, durability, all of these are important. Um, ergonomics, usually we're sacrificing that a bit, okay? We're not getting some really nice, plush, soft, big grips. So it needs to be good enough. Speed of use, our question is, can we do the job or not? Um, and then finally, often we think about, uh, when we're wanting to buy tools, like prestige, or novelty, or some kind of ego gets in the way. Or like, we want sexy tools that give you that special feeling in your pants. Um, I would say for a tiny toolkit, like try and set that aside. I've graded them out to say they're probably not important. And then finally, there is one silly thing in my kit, um, which we'll leave at some point, which is this ridiculous micro keyring vernier caliper, which really does not measure or do anything useless for, but I think it's cute. Um, I guess what I'm saying is be aware of the toys that come in crackers, because they are not tools. Um, but they might be fun. So an example. This is a tiny toolkit multimeter. Okay? This is a tiny toolkit multimeter. I can't believe I'm recommending this thing to you. All right, this is like 12 quid on AliExpress. Um, but the thing is, it's good enough. It does everything I want. I'm mostly doing like Arduino and microcontroller stuff. I want to poke it in and know are there some volts here. I would not be so keen to use it for high voltage work. I don't really do high voltage work. It weighs 80 grams. It's tiny. It's all good enough. Um, the only thing I regret about when I bought this was that for one pound more, I could have the model up, the A3008, which talks. <laughs> I think if I had it, I'd also regret that. Okay, so sometimes we need to solve real problems for our families with our toolkits. Like, what to get me for Christmas. Okay, and it happens that tiny tools and tiny toolkits make perfect gifts for you or for your hacker friends. So if we look at the philosophy of what makes a perfect gift, okay, price point needs to be about right. So let's say 20 to 40 pounds. Can be a bit less, can be a bit more. They need the perfect gifts are things that you want, so it's wanted, but that are a bit more expensive than you would buy for yourself. So that little bit of luxury. If it's luxury, practical, useful and wanted, and it will last for 20 years, in this case there are things in my kit which have been given to me as presents which will outlast the people who gave them to, to me. And that actually means quite a lot to me. So I think that's the definition of a perfect gift. Um, things in this kit that fit into that category. The case itself, um, I was given mine. These kind of really very nice Knipex um, pliers and pliers wrenches are absolutely perfect things to stick on your Christmas list. Um, there's only one way to beat that, which is homemade gifts. And there is a tool in here which was made for me as a gift, and that's also wonderful. 
Um, so, uh, for the engineers in here, here, what you do is in November, you go, you find the link of exactly the tool you want, and you WhatsApp message it to your family saying, buy me this for Christmas, please. Sorts it out. They're very happy. They're like, tick, done. Christmas list sorted. Um, so, some examples of those. I actually had them out, but I'll wave them around a bit more. Um, these tiny, tiny ass combination pliers and pliers wrenches from Knipex are incredibly good quality and um, very highly functional and super useful. Um, and also not cheap. I think this is about 20 to 25, this is about 40. Um, so definitely in the gift territory for me. Uh, highly recommended to me by Richard and um, there's a couple of choices. These are the 125 mil model. Um, there is also, you can see on the side there, the 100 mil model which is the extra small. Uh, we actually, I think, slightly prefer the slightly larger one. It's like 20 grams heavier um, but definitely a lot nicer to hold and work with. These are some wonderful tools um, and um, worth having there in your tiny kit. So, back to the manifesto. A tiny toolkit is never finished. We're constantly updating, shifting things in to come to the EMF, shifting things out, playing around as they evolve, as they go along. But I think something happened early in my making journey, and I was like in my 20s, it's like, I want the tools, I want all the tools, I want to be able to do the things. Um, then as you move on, you're like, okay, I want to be able to do these things better, and sometimes that means I want better tools, and I want the best tools. But nowadays I'm like, okay, I've had all the tools, I've had all the tools that I want, what can I get away with? What is the smallest best kit I can get away with is much more practical. Um, and I highly recommend that. I also recommend Swedish Death Cleaning. That's a book by Margarita Magnusson. Um, it's kind of like Marie Kondo, so like minimalist decluttering, but with like an added sense of mortality. Uh, she's this 88-year-old Swedish woman who has seen a lot of life and cleared out a lot of houses for friends and relatives. Um, so I think part of that is pruning is important. Things have to leave your kit. Um, and one of the methods you can use for this, if you don't know whether to get rid of something, is to stick a bit of tape on it and write the date on it that you last used it. I'm like, okay, so here I had one of these multi-tools in there. I realized I never used it. Because while it does a lot of things in itself, everything that it did or, or that I actually used was already duplicated in my kit with something better. So it left. That's my kit. Somebody else's kit might have one of these in. That's all fine. Okay. Making your own tools is a lot of fun. And making your own tool storage is a lot of fun. And customizing your tools is a lot of fun. Um, so here's a couple that um, we use. So this is a pine cell soldering iron. Tiny, tiny, tiny ass USB soldering iron. Looks like this. Okay. Absolutely brilliant, but to make it, it doesn't come with any case. So I made this tiny 3D printed case. It's on printables, you can make your own, just to give it enough resilience to be able to live in the kit. Uh, so it's an absolute minimal case for it. Um, Richard and I have also been making holders for screwdriver bits. So here, four millimeter screwdriver bits to keep the kits really small. Um, again, these are up on printables. Some more things that uh, we've been making in terms of tool storage and tool customization. So these are both from Richard's kit. He's made this amazing micro four millimeter drive set with a heck of a lot of functionality. My favorite bit being that little tiny ratchet in the middle there, which is made from a six millimeter to four millimeter screwdriver adjuster like adapter, sorry, with a bit of wire stuck through the middle of it. Um, he's also got that super compact ratchet set. And it's often this thing of like, we can buy very small tools, but then if we can uh, like get enough of the little screwdriver bits in and the little extras and the little customizations, we can get a lot more functionality out of them. Um, again, more things that screw. Uh, 
the top picture there is the iFixit Mako kit, which is an absolutely awesome four millimeter like micro screwdriver kit. It's about 35 quid from iFixit Direct. And that is my recommended like desk screwdriver kit. And I love it. The ergonomics of the handle is brilliant. Um, high quality four millimeter bits. But within it, I was like, that's great, but it's too big for my tiny toolkit. So I worked out that within there, there's about 60 bits. 35 of them I use, they're amazing. 27 of them are like pentalobe and trilobe and weird stuff that I have never used. So they're at home. Uh, it comes with, the handle is brilliant, but it's got this little flex shaft thing. The flex shaft thing, throw it in the bin. Uh, so then take the whole kit, which is then cut down to being this lot, okay? And that's my portable screwdriver kit, and I couldn't give up on the ergonomics of this handle because I like that one too much. So a bit of customization. Um, in terms of full size screwdrivers, I'm not going to make any recommendations because there's loads of brilliant ones, but anything by Wera or Weha uh, are also brilliant and highly recommended. Okay, back to the manifesto. My toolkit is not your toolkit. Um, so one of the things that's nice is that we make a lot of decisions between us about different kits and we put excellent tools in, they can be very different and that's fine because what's right for me is not right for you. Um, and the other thing is, and I think this goes for everything, is like if we've not broken bread together, uh, if we've not sat down and eaten together, please don't ask to borrow my tools. Because if I don't know you, that's probably a bit too much. So. Examples of, of different choices that we make. Things that cut, okay? Uh, Richard has these awesome CK electrician scissors. They're about 20 pounds. You could cut with them all day and cut through anything. Um, I have like the ultra lightweight cheap version, which were recommended to me by a paramedic. I think they used to cut your clothes off by paramedics. Um, and sure, they will not last enough, as long but they really do the job for me. Uh, my conclusion on that is both of these are great. Next up, tools are for using. Okay. Um, tiny toolkits are for using, not for keeping pristine, not for show. I think it's a mark of pride if you wear out your tools from using them, like from using them properly. That's great, you get to replace them. Um, so I always say respect your tools and care for your tools, but they are only tools. And I think something that sometimes we see from like EDC videos, everyday carry videos on YouTube, is that people have a lot of ego about it. They're trying to make these beautiful kits to show off with a lot of titanium and a lot of value going into it. Um, and I would say a tiny toolkit is not a pissing up the wall competition. Um, and it's not an extension to your tool. Just have the tools, have them for using. Um, nearly there on the, on the repair manifesto. We're on to repair. So tiny toolkits are good for the planet. Um, they're efficient. Repair saves the planet. People don't talk about it enough, but maintenance saves the planet. And I think we need to talk about maintenance a lot more. Because maintenance is what you do, so you don't have to do repairs. Uh, repair and maintenance both save money. And in an era of capitalism and throwaway culture, I think making is a political act. And so being able to make on the go is important. Um, the pictures there is the side of my dishwasher. Last week, I spent four hours fixing it. And now it actually cleans again. And I think it's going to keep going for a few more years. Most of the problem was it gunked up inside, um, which is what's in the top corner of that picture. But it needed, you can see I'm using some of my tool, tiny toolkit to strip it down. So, repairs are a good way to help friends. And they're really good for bartering. Um, here I serviced a neighbor's sewing machine. And uh, in exchange, I got two jars of homemade granola. Um, I was given a jar of absolutely delicious homemade marmalade, which we ate every morning. And I um, repaired a friend's bike. Five minutes. Woo. Um, I fixed the shredder and I was given a bag of my favorite coffee beans. Uh, so we're going to publish a full exchange rate for bartering on the website shortly. Um, 
I've just got my five minute warning, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit. The last one of the manifesto, the best tool is your brain. So upgrade your grey matter. Collect tools, collect techniques. Um, I don't know why it's in here, but I've got to get Douglas Adams in here somehow. So this is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This is after the Gilgafrinchums have crash landed on Earth. And um, here, I think the happy Gilgafrincham has said, they gave me a couple of sticks and four prefects take them off from me. He said, curling tongs. You're going to die out, you know that, don't you? And I just love that scene. Um, I can't quite tell whether he's talking about the Golgofrinchums or humans, but there we go. So, bringing it to a close, uh, just a few more of our favorite tools. In terms of cases, we've got these, uh, this was what Richard recommended to me, these Lihit Labs book style pen case, triple zipper, 20 pounds, not too expensive. There's similar giant pencil cases, and I think that's aimed at pencil case, uh, like people who want giant pencil cases. We quite like giant pencil cases. There's some Angu high capacity pencil cases. They're about 10 pounds. Um, we also got these clear plastic, quite cheap, heavy duty pencil cases from about three pounds from Wilco, before Wilco passed away, rest in peace. Um, but pretty much anything you can get is a good place to start. Um, things that poke. Here is a mini, mini, tiny ass pry bar that Richard made me um, and uh, gave me for Christmas. That was a lovely gift. When you've got pokey things in your bag, you need ways of covering up the blades. So I use kite end caps to stick on some pokey things, or I have this eclipse, like reversible scribe, where the point can be taken out and turned around. But it's worth thinking about, of, like, how do you keep your shaft safe? A few more favorite tools, special purpose modular toolkit, everything you need to solder. Okay, pine saw, pine saw case, little tins uh, with solder in. This is one of Richard's um, special kits there, uh, and a USB power supply. It is incredible what we can get in a large pencil case nowadays. Um, and then the final tool recommendation is pack a load of bits and pieces in your case. Because a couple of Wagos, a little bit of a jumper wire, a piece of string, and some cable ties will get you a long way. Um, we buy our tools generally from the, all the obvious places, so a lot comes from AliExpress and eBay, um, FFX, RS, Farnal, Pimeroni. I've got some really great tools. Uh, literally anywhere by, but Amazon, uh, because they're evil. Um, and I'm nearly there. So, how do you start your own tiny toolkit? I hope you are all inspired to start your own tiny toolkit. Um, my recommended steps are, number one, define your purpose. Like, be really clear on what is this toolkit for and be clear on what it's not for. Because a toolkit for everything is okay at everything, but probably not great at exactly what you want to do. Start making a wish list, look at other people's toolkits, look at our website. Um, I've got a link to the spreadsheet that I made at the beginning where I based it first on Richard's. And then I chopped out some stuff and I added some things in. Um, set yourself a target weight and a size and a cost. Be aware of the overall thing. And then get a case and start adding tools. Add the things you've already got. That's it. Oh yeah, and make your Christmas list and uh, send WhatsApp messages to all your family and friends telling them what to buy you. So there we go. Thank you very much. That was the Tiny Toolkit Manifesto. <laughs>